afternoon and a hearty welcome to News R. In this edition, the newly appointed Solicitor General subscribes to the oath of office. Sierra Leone High Commissioner in Ghana hosts Investment Forum and Sierra Mineral Holdings, one of the pays surface rent to three chief dams in Moyamba District. For well, these stories and more lined up in this edition of News R. I am Alice Maya Matanza. Right. First in the news tonight, the newly appointed Solicitor General, Mohamed Lamin Tawali, has subscribed to the oath of office before President Julius Madabio at State House in Freetown. The swearing in ceremony targeted judges, magistrates, and other legal practitioners. The Constitution of Sierra Leone clearly establishes the office of a Solicitor General, which shall be a public office. Our Monsieur now reports. <laughs> Discharge the duties of the Solicitor General of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Discharge the duties of the Solicitor General of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Of support. support. And maintain the Constitution of Sierra Leone. And maintain the Constitution of Sierra Leone. As by law established. As by law established. So help me Allah. So help me Allah. Reading the warrants at the swearing ceremony, Secretary to President Dr. Julius Sandy stated that subsection 2 of section 65 provides for the appointment of the Solicitor General by the President by warrants under his hand on the advice of the Judiciary and Legal Service Commission. The Secretary to the President disclosed that the Constitution of Sierra Leone also provides for the Solicitor General before assuming the functions of his office to take and subscribe to the oath as set out in the third schedule to the Constitution of Sierra Leone 1991. The newly appointed Solicitor General, Mohamed Lamin Tarawali, commended President Julius Madabu for the confidence reposed in him by appointing him as Solicitor General, adding that he is extremely grateful and will not disappoint the government as he is very much aware of the strides of the President during this one year in office. He said it is good to revamp the legal system as a good legal system is part of the development and growth of any nation. The Solicitor General told President Julius Madabu that it will be a pleasure for him to work with the Attorney General and Minister of Justice to build, develop and improve the Justice Department, which is the Law Officers Department and also the largest government law firm. We must work with the to ourselves and to this nation. It is said that if our laws are to be respected, we must respect the laws. In my view, these are doable. It requires commitment, dedication, professionalism, and discipline. It is part of the vision of the new direction to which I place my support. With respect to past to the person of Gomes Resource General, who have paved the way for the first homegrown and locally trained Solicitor General to occupy that mantle, I doff my hat. <laughs> I will continue the best of my ability to discharge the duties of the grace, self discipline, candor, and respect the office deserved. President Judas Madabu noted that the Solicitor General was meticulously chosen and they are going to demand more from him as the country has lagged behind and there is the need to catch up. President Bill highlighted that there are very good signs that his administration is on the right track, encouraging him to work in close collaboration with the law firm as much is expected of him. You know your duties, of course, I expect, but we are going to demand more from you. As you know, we are lagging behind and we need to catch up. So there is a lot to be done. The age to, to five is not enough for us. You need to put in more hours. We are beginning to find our place in society and we should continue on that path. That is why I want to encourage everybody 
to really put their hands on deck because this is not something that we can do alone. There's so much to be done. We have lived around for quite a while and now it's time to work. And there's so much to do. Uh, what we have to do is speed because quite a lot of times we encounter delays because of um, maybe capacity or numbers. But as you join today, we formally today, we expect that you are going to contribute to making this nation a better nation. Solicitor General Mohamed Lamin Tarawali has practiced for 18 years in the law profession. SBC TV News I in Freetown, how must we reporting? Major projects of the Chinese government in Sierra Leone are military aid to ISLAF, Foreign Service Academy, education, amongst others. This was disclosed by the Charge d'Affaires of the Chinese Embassy in Sierra Leone, Wang Zinim, at a press conference held at the Chinese Embassy in Freetown. Daphne Kimamakoli reports. To ISLAF, Foreign Service Academy, Education and Agriculture, according to the Chinese Embassy, are priorities for the development of Sierra Leone. Serge Defer at the Chinese Embassy Wang Jimin said Chinese Ministry of Defense has decided to provide 50 million yuan military aid gratis to the ISLAF, which he added would be utilized for refurbishment of military officers' quarters and other needs of the military. He said the Foreign Service Academy will provide better training services to career diplomats. Sierra governments proposed to construct a Foreign Service Academy by using Chinese government's aided phone. First, China's external economic environment has changed. But the long-term growth momentum of the Chinese economy has not. In the world economy, the downward pressure is mounting. Uncertainties and instabilities are increasing. These are caused mainly by weakening driving forces for international trade, increasing turbulence in international financial markets, accumulating risks, and uh, looming protectionism and unilateral. Wang Zemin spoke about the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation, which is to be held in Beijing in April. The Belt and Road Initiative, he said, originates in China, a platform for open and inclusive cooperation. Yes, two sessions continue. Poverty reduction, the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, further opening up to foreign investments. And the high quality growth have become the bad world, attracting attention of uh, experts and people around the world. When asked about the status of some Chinese projects and investments in Taelun, like the Jue Hospital and Shandong Steel Mining, Wang Jimin said management by the Taelun government has been a major problem in the operations of the utilities. For SLBC News, Daphne Kimamakoli reporting. The Sierra Mineral Holdings 1, the Metco, has paid surface rents to three chiefdoms at the CD complex, Monsenesi Junction, Lower Banza Chiefdom, Moyamba District. A total of over 1,374 million loans was paid to landowners and the community. SLBC's Hawabari was there. This is as a result of mining in communities like this. Environmental degradation is also a result of the creation of nearby sites for tailing storage, water storage, dams and reservoirs, beams and waste disposal pits. These alterations to the natural state of the environment are caused by the construction of exploration plant or access roads and mining facilities by heavy duty mechanized equipment such as off-road vehicles, drill rigs or seismic exploration vehicles. This is why Vimetco pays surface rent yearly to the community people and landowners in compensation for their land that is being destroyed due to the mining activities. These farmers whose lands have been degraded due to the mining activities are however eager to receive the check which according to some will help boost developmental plans. Yeah, I know they feel fine. Because now they put rest, 
against our right to an interest now. I wasn't happy when I saw the effect of the mining on my farmland. The swamp land was where I planted rice, but I can't do that now because the land is no longer fertile. I am now going to invest the money on something else and stop farming. Okay, plant Wednesday. You know they come up fine. When we plant rice on the swamp land, it doesn't grow well because of the waste product of the mining. There is too much dirt and it affects the rice. But I'm happy they built well for us in our community. When I receive my money, I will pay my children's school fees. Speaking to community people on behalf of the Parman Chiefs, PC Melrose Perry of Pandakemo Chiefdom Bonf District thanked the National Minerals Agency for their involvement in the payment of the surface rent. She said they, together with the Metco, have made the process more transparent but cautioned the community people to stop derailing the progress of the companies by halting their operations whenever they are grieved. She highlighted the numerous development Vimetco is undertaking at the moment in communities they operate. Martin Jimmy, Deputy Secretary, Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources, noted that the Mines and Minerals Act of 2019 states how money should be distributed, received, and the amount to be given to each community. He encouraged the people to set up projects as a team, which will in turn benefit their children in the community. Acting General Manager, SMHL Vimetko, Basudeb Data, thanked landowners for their patience as the surface rent was a bit delayed this year. He noted that because of the cooperation the company is receiving in communities they operate, their company is doing very well in the market. He highlighted to the community people about the extension of their main washing plant, which means they will increase in the amount paid every year. He said for the past 10 years they have been paying surface rent and will continue to do that for as long as they are in the communities. He, however, emphasized the need for the people to invest in the education of their children so that they will be able to secure jobs in the company. I would like to urge uh, all the recipients, specifically the landowners, uh, to use this money, to utilize this money very wisely because you know, we should not make this money to be wasted. It has to be in direction of the sustainability of your family, your society, and your future generations, your children. So please ensure that this money is being wisely utilized. The distribution of checks formed part of the program. Reporting for SLBC, Hawabari. Sierra Leone High Commission in Ghana has organized an investment forum in Accra. The investment forum attracted investors in Ghana and other countries around the world. Let's go to Ms. Stevens reports. The Sierra Leone Investment Seminar attracted over 200 companies and more than 100 private investors based in Ghana and around the world. According to the High Commissioner to Ghana, Francis Anderson, the session is geared towards getting people to know that, apart from the 10-year civil conflict, the Ebola pandemic, and the twin disasters that devastated Sierra Leone, there are good sides to showcase about the country. She thanked the government of Ghana for creating the enabling environment to make the seminar a success. She noted that the seminar is in line with President Bio's vision in rebranding the country through trade and investment. The forum, she maintained, will provide domestic and foreign investors, provide intermediaries with information on investment opportunities and change the investment climate generally in the country. Sierra Leone is endowed with multiple blessings, peace and security, hospitable people, 18 varieties of mineral resources, fertile land, marine resources, beautiful beaches, and the list goes on. As the mission, the High Commission in Accra has embraced the move from traditional to economic diplomacy. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Dr. Ali Kaba, said the ties between Freetown and Accra will be strengthened under the leadership of President Bill. 
Dr. Kaba noted that under the new direction administration, they are determined to change the narratives from one of dependency to a country where trade and investment will enhance the livelihood of the people. Dr. Kaba informed all that it's a new dawn for Sierra Leone and that the government of President Bio will continue to make imprints in foreign direct investments to support national growth and sustainable development. A sign that knowing that the future of Sierra Leone is intertwined with the destiny of all of Africa. We are here today in Ghana not just affirming the depth of the relationship between us over the years and decades, but also recognizing the synergy that we can build together to create opportunities and true prosperity for our two people. Among other Sierra Leonean authorities who attended the forum included ministers of agriculture and economic planning and deputy ministers of trade and tourism. Diplomats at the seminar are expected to always focus on promoting favorable developments and trade relations that will be consistent with the evolving global trends for the country's long-term economic development, among others. Reporting for SLBC, Rose Konima Stevens. The Director General, National Telecommunications Commission, has updated journalists on the Simbox spread matter, which was uncovered in November 2018. He made this disclosure during the weekly Ministry of Information and Communications press briefing. Joseph Toure was there and now reports. The National Telecommunications Commission and the police bust a SIM box fraud syndicate involving hundreds of thousand SIM cards, and this led to the arrest of some Sierra Leoneans and a Chinese national. Concerns have been raised by Sierra Leoneans on the status of the matter. NATCOM Director General Maxwell Masakoi noted as part of their settlement as per regulations with mobile network operators involved, they have levied fines on both AfriCell and Orange, which should be paid within 45 days. The penalty, the, the, the levy, I should say, is 400,000 leons per every SIM card. So if you get the count, we establish that, you multiply that, we got those figures. So roughly, I think, uh, and, and I'm going to try to regurgitate, but 94, 941 times 400,000 should give you something like 376 million. Uh, the other one is uh, roughly 16 billion 877. 16 billion 877. He added, they are making efforts together with the mobile operators to get unsanctioned SIM card hackers off the street. Minister of Information and Communications, Mohamed Rahman Swari, said they have an agreement with all mobile network operators to give 0.005% of their profit to Universal Access Development Fund. A lot of our people live in rural communities. Which, would you, which are on south and on the south, far from communities. I was started yours truly. I go for holidays to my village. I have to walk quite some distance to go to a field where you have droplets of, you know, um, signals before you could make a call. So, cognizant of that, we don't want to come back here several years down the line to explain the same narrative. This is a new direction. We are committed to changing this narrative. The minister said government will improve digital network in the country and that they will leave behind a digital inclusive Sierra Leone. The chairman of NATCOM, Dr. Prince Adin, also pledged NATCOM's commitment to ensure affordable and accessible internet and mobile services. He added they will ensure fair competition in the ICT sector for the nation's development. SLBC News, Joseph Turi, Freetown. A team of Spanish doctors with support from Caritas Freetown arrived in Freetown two weeks ago. They have been at Christ the King Hospital at Kisi Village, Waterloo, and has operated on about 120 patients suffering from appendicitis, hernia, and other ailments. Daphne Kimamakoli visited the hospital and now reports. The Spanish medical team, which comprises mostly surgeons, has operated on 120 male and female patients with different ailments. 
This move, according to the executive director Caritas Free Town Reverend Father Peter Conte, is to complement government's efforts in providing health care services in the country. He said this is the third visit by the team. Reverend Father Peter Conte said the vision of Caritas is to help those that cannot provide. They appreciate the efforts of the team and will continue the cooperation. Send them two sets of certificates. The one is from the Archdiocese and Caritas, uh, indicating our appreciation for what the doctors have done. The second certificate will be a certificate of cooperation showing that we, our cooperation has been strengthened. This is the third year the doctors are coming here and uh, it's been a wonderful cooperation. Before their arrival, I also went to Malaga as an indication of the cooperation and bond. Spanish doctor Kiko Perez said among the cases they have treated, some are difficult because they are long overdue, adding that they have visited Mali and Ghana on similar mission. Health coordinator Caritas Freetown and manager of the Christ the King Hospital, Sister Josephine Amara, said the hospital also operates on the free medical service but has only received one supply of medical supplies from government since its inception in the Kisi village about three years ago. She said the hospital is challenged with human resource and finance. You see, when you start a health facility, the human resource, paying your staff, is one of the biggest challenges you can face. From experience and two way need starting it. Mm -hmm. That's what we have discovered that to run the hospital, the human resource being your staff day in, day out is a big problem. And that's one of our biggest challenges in mm -hmm. terms of sustainability. Christ the King Hospital was established during the Ebola outbreak in Kisi Village, Waterloo, to provide health care services for pregnant women, lactating mothers, and children under five. For SLBC News, Daphne Kima Macaulay reporting. Action Aid Sierra Leone and Center for Coordination of Youth Activities have launched a report on the status of implementation of the African Charter on Democracy, Elections, and Governance. The report looked at the socio-economic and political spheres of Sierra Leone. Joseph Ture witnessed the event at the British Council Hall and now reports. The project mobilizing civil society support for the implementation of African Governance Architecto, which was launched in 2017, was to increase and strengthen the role of civil society organizations to ensure that all African Union member states are democratic and accountable to their citizens. It could also be noted that nearly 15 countries have only signed and ratified the Charter in Africa. Sierra Leone was among the first countries to sign the African Charter on Democracy, Election and Governance in 2007 and was later ratified in 2009. Youth from Freetown, Bo and Bombali used various methodologies including focus group discussions, interviews, among others, to capture data from citizens' opinion on issues surrounding accountability and good governance. Some of the findings of the report show that both past and present governments have made tremendous efforts on issues of political and religious tolerance, infrastructure, energy, education, and the rule of law over the years. However, it also captured some challenges which include accountability and transparency and instances of interference of the executive on function of the court, police, and some other democratic institutions. Executive Director, Action Aid Sierra Leone, Mohamed Sila, said the citizens' research report represents the voices of many Sierra Leoneans. So this project is like to realize the commitment that our government has made at the international level of things that we do to promote democracy, the government and elections processes in our country. So what we decided to do now is get this big charter from where we are standing at the African Union level and then try and work with very young people who are sitting around this room, train them and they become like good soldiers and ambassadors. Executive Director, Center for Coordination of Youth Activities, 
Abigail Stevens stated right goes with responsibilities to ensure governance system work. She stated during the research, it was revealed that many people, especially the rural communities, have limited knowledge on governance issues. The executive director added, this report will help political leaders to be on their toes in administering the day-to-day -day affairs of the state. Other speakers from youth groups, CSOs and the Youth Commission made meaningful contributions to the program. SLBC News, Joseph Turi, Freetown. Here is a public notice from the Office of the Clerk of Parliament. The Office of the Clerk of Parliament is informing all Honourable Members of Parliament and the general public that the sitting of Parliament scheduled for Tuesday, 2nd February 2019 has been postponed to Thursday, 4th April 2019 at 10am in the forenoon at the Bank of Surulean Complex, Kingtown, Freetown. Well, if you've just joined us, this is News Origin live from the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. And I'm Alice Myama Thompson. More news stories after the break. Hello everyone, my name is Eben and you're watching SLBC. Don't touch that, that. Peace. This is Emanuela with SLBC. For news, views and comments, always tune to SLBC. The Audit Service Sierra Leone has held a symposium with civil society movement at the Ministry of Information and Communications Conference Room. The symposium is for CSOs to understand the audit process and audit opinion and for a cordial relationship between them as their mandate is to promote accountability, good governance and democracy in the country. Sheila Raffel filed in this report. Civil Society Movement, Juliet Anderson, says Civil Society Movement Sierra Leone is a coalition of civil society organizations that was established 21 years ago. Their role is to articulate demands, define citizens' rights, promote democracy and good governance through advocacy and public engagement. They have been working with public financial management issues for the past 15 years and give a background of the workshop and their successful work they have done. In 2018, with support from the World Bank to the Ministry of Finance, we successfully secured a grant to implement a project titled Popularizing the PFM Act of 2016 for Increased Domestic Revenue Mobilization. Deputy Auditor General for Audit Service, Sylvain Bell, says civil society should use audit reports as a source of information to advocate for the effective delivery of public services. There is also a need for civil society organizations to understand the processes involved in putting together the audit reports. Mr. Bell said they can also contribute to strengthening compliance with audit recommendations by taking the auditees to tax. In that year, we audited five CSOs to include Focus One Housing, about women, about in women's clinic, Plant Parenthood Association, Action Plus, SOS Chile and Village. We have a copy of the report. In that report, where we looked at the activities of the CSOs, we found out that most of them, the ones that we looked at, a proper financial management system, and we are happy to know that because some of these institutions are receiving money on behalf of government, and we wanted to be sure that uh, they are actually using the money for the intended purpose. The audit service is encouraging all civil society organizations to make good use of the opportunity and relationship as they have capable and qualified staff that have all what it takes to empower the CSOs on audit issues. SLBC Sheila Refu. A commissioner at NATCOM, Robert Kunde Makago, has disclosed plans to implement ECOWAS One Network roaming project for ECOWAS countries. He was speaking at an evaluation meeting of ECOWAS regulations on roaming in Abuja, Nigeria. The meeting was an experience sharing session for ECOWAS countries to successfully implement the One Networking. During
roaming for ECOWAS countries will enable travelers to have easy access to communicate with families and friends. Commissioner of NATCOM, Robert Kondema Kagbo, said Sierra Leone launched the project in 2017, but much was not done regarding its implementation. He said President Bio's government is determined to ensure Sierra Leone is part of the global village, which is why the project will be implemented before the end of June of this year. He spoke about the Minister of Information and Communications commitment and determination to ensure the country fulfill its international treaty. He said that as part of NATCOM mandate, it is to ensure mobile operators provide best services and network for its consumers. Commissioner Kagbo said that the implementation of the One Network and Roaming will help to boost the country's economy and also bring people closer to their relatives and friends despite their destinations. Chairman of National Commission for Persons with Disability, James Tawo Collin, has presented a check for 10 million loans to a disabled disability persons organization, DPO Handicap Action Movement, HAM, at their Joshua State residence, residence in Wellington. The donation came two weeks after a series of engagements with the Ministry of Social Welfare and the National Commission for Persons with Disability to support the group with funds to get a shelter and a workshop. Ham was evicted from the missing families land in January this year and were homeless for the past months. Francis Denema reports. Before the donation, several engagements were done with the Chairman of National Commission for Persons with Disability and the Ministry of Social Welfare by the Sierra Leone Union on Disability Issues, Media Watch and Handicap Action Movement, Ham. Two weeks ago, the Deputy Minister of Social Welfare and the Chairman of National Commission for Persons with Disability agreed that they were to take the provision of shelter for harm as a flagship project for the Commission. The Chairman of the National Commission for Persons with Disability, James Tawo Collins, said he knows the role played by HAM in empowering persons with disabilities and called on them to use the funds judiciously, saying that the fund is to give them immediate solution to their housing problem. Deputy Minister of Social Welfare, Gender and Children's Affairs, Mohamed Hajkela, said he was discouraged when he knew that Handicap Action Movement was evicted and are homeless. He promised that his ministry would restore the dignity of the organization since disability issues are high on the New Direction's agenda. He called on the commission and partners to give more support to the group so that they will continue to transform the lives of their colleagues. Receiving the check, Chairman Handicap Action Movement Abu White Kruma said they are grateful to the Commission for the timely intervention as the rainy season has started and promised to ensure the proper use of the money. He called on the Commission and the government to do more so that they will continue to be self-reliant and train others to be like them. SLBC News, Francis Ndanema reporting. The consultant engineer, George Lamin Vandy, has presented to the Minister of Transportation, of Transport and Aviation the proposed structure of the Maritime Search and Rescue Coordinating Center to be constructed in Bonf District. According to engineer Vandy, the proposed structure will be a two-story building with a ship shape to house maritime facilities and staff for search and rescue purposes at sea. Dorian Barry, again. As Maritime Administration places sea safety as topmost priority, the presentation of the proposed structure is coming at a time when President Bill is optimistic and determined to change the landscape of maritime in the country. The proposed structure will be a two-story building with a ship shape that will be housing staff, offices, CCTV cameras, and ICT facilities. With Bond being a touristic town, the building will have a semblance of touristic view. The consultant engineer for the project on Maritime Search and Rescue Coordinating Center, George Lamin Vandy, said that two land sites have been identified for the said construction, but one is more suitable and cheaper. He said that the reason for not choosing the other land is as a result of lack of jetty and high cost involved in undertaking the project on the said land. He said that the building would portray the brand of maritime administration, which is sheep and fish, and will be constructed to meet international standards. 
Executive Director of the Maritime Administration, Ken Philip Sondai, said that the project on search and rescue coordinating center was developed 11 years ago, but was not implemented. He said that the construction of the search and rescue coordinating center will help the maritime meet the globe best practices on sea safety measures. He said that apart from the structure, plans are underway to purchase a boat that will be used in their search and rescue patrols. He said that the facilities will serve the entire coastal line and beyond. The Minister of Transport and Aviation, Kabine Kalon, said that the project on search and rescue coordinating center is part of President Bio's vision to change and improve maritime status in the country. He commended the team of engineers for their efforts for completing the first phase of the project. He promised them of his ministry's support and contributions for a successful project. The Right to Access Information Commission has held a stakeholders forum on a proactive disclosure of information. The roundtable discussions, which took place at the Family Kingdom Research Conference Room, attracted officials from ministries, departments and agencies. There is a poor level of compliance by public authorities in proactively disclosing information. Sheila Raffel filed in this report. Governmental Protection Agency, Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, Statistics Sierra Leone and Sierra Leone Police are the four MDAs that were able to meet the March 1st deadline for the proactive disclosure of information. The establishment of the Rights to Access Information Commission in 2014 generated a lot of interest from the demand side of the process, namely citizens, persons with disabilities, women, youth civil society organization and development partners who remain concerned about getting access to vital information as a way to effectively and efficiently corruption and promote service delivery. The chairman, Rights to Access Information Commission, Dr. Ibrahim Segashaw, said some of the reasons for the commission is to promote transparency, accountability and good governance. He said the commission had earlier held a disclosure session wherein they engaged 80 participants from MDAs to submit proactive publication scheme and to ally their fear on the area of protection and confidentiality. To take the message, cascade the message down to their various uh, MDAs, to their other uh, employees, to their directors, to respect the deadline, the March 1 deadline. But unfortunately, what happened was that uh, the March 1 deadline came recently and we observed that uh, only a few MDAs. The Deputy Minister of Information and Communications, Solomon Jamil, said the proactive disclosure forum aims at facilitating supply and demand side data training which will develop and finalize the proactive publication scheme for all ministries, departments and agencies. Citizens, he said, have the right to have access. The information, the resources are, that are at our disposal, we hold them for and on behalf of the people of Sierra Leone. When the people demand information, we have to put those information into the public domain. It is their right. They must have access to that information. We have a duty. We owe the public a duty. It's a legal duty. Now that we have a statute, it, it's now beyond a moral or an ethical obligation. Permanent Secretary in the office of the Chief Minister, Nancy Tengbe, said the Rights to Access Information Commission is among commissions that are of top, most priority to the office of the Chief Minister. She therefore said that all ministries, departments and agencies should ensure that they comply with the Commission on the Disclosure Scheme. Madam Tengbe asked all MDAs to meet the second deadline, which is on 30th May 2019, and that failure to disclosure information will not be treated lightly. In line with SDG 16, government has demonstrated its commitments and capability to deliver high-level services to the citizens of this country by establishing and strengthening the capacity of good governance institutions, MDAs, etc. MDAs promised to meet the second deadline, which is May 30. The four MDAs that have made 
their disclosures were lauded and encouraged to continue, while those who did not were urged to comply. SLBC Sheila Refun. And now for African news. Police in the Algerian capital, Algiers, have fired tear gas and water cannon to disperse hundreds of thousands of anti-government protesters. They had gathered for the sixth week running to demand the resignation of the alien president, Abdelaziz Bouteflika, with many waving the national flag and chanting, and with cars sounding their horns in support. The crowd said they wanted the departure of the whole of what they called the system. The authorities in Burundi have banned all journalists from working for the BBC, BBC and Voice of America in Burundi. The National Council of Communication said it was forbidden for any journalist, Burundian or foreign, to provide directly or indirectly any information to the broadcasters. It's described as a lie, a BBC documentary broadcast last year about killings by the security forces in a secret house in the capital, Bujumbura. The Burundian authorities said the documentary violated media law. The BBC has previously said it stands by its journalists. The U.S. government has extended by 12 months leave to remain of thousands of Liberians who were facing deportation by Sunday. Most of them fled Liberia's two civil wars between 1989 and 2003 and were allowed to leave in the U.S. under a scheme called Deferred and Forced Departure. The Trump administration has extended the scheme following pressure from lawmakers, human rights activists, and civil rights lawyers. And now for entertainment news. And Sierra Leone young talented artists are now taking the center stage to ensure that the music industry is promoted in the country. One such young star is Molai Mos Kamara, popularly known as Big Mos, who is an R&B and Zouk singer. He has decided to premiere his musical video titled Till Eternity and a seven-year-old Ugandan rapper has been asked by the Ugandan youth minister to stop doing music or get arrested. For more on this, let's join our entertainment desk with Mohamed Kimbilan Bangura. In Sierra Leone, young talented artists are now taking the center stage to ensure that the music industry is promoted in the country. Sierra Leone musicians are sometimes considered drop out. The younger stars are now trying to debunk that idea as a fallacy. One short young star is more like Moskamaga, popularly known as Big Moss, who is a R&B and Zouk singer. Big Moss' nickname came because of his ambition in doing big things. He attended the Christchurch Primary School and Albert Academy before proceeding to Mabuka Secondary School. Later entered Fabe College where he acquired a degree in economics. Big Mo started his musical career when he was in Body Home in Mabroka where he was miming different international songs. Big Mo said his passion to become a musician was like a dream though he knew he has the talent. In 2017, he came into active music and recorded his first song titled Natural Mistake. He was in final year in university. He competed in the Sing with Jean Peter singing competition, emerged as the winner of the competition, earning a cash prize of 30 million neons and a record label with an album. Winning the competition, according to him, was not an easy task as he had to sing songs given to him by the judges, especially songs that he was not used to. But at the end, he won the reality show. He said his mentors are Kim and Jimmy B. Emerson and the international star Chris Brown. His genre of music as Zouk R&B Afrobeat was recently a place R&B Stress that musicians should start singing songs that people should appreciate worldwide. Big Moz has decided to premiere his musical video title Till Eternity, which talks about two lovers in deep relationship vowing to love each other till death. Well, Till Eternity is a touching love story. It's, uh, it's telling the story of uh, two people who eventually fell in love, but then uh, 
there is one because you know falling in love comes in two ways there is one in which probably the guys are the one who is more interested in the relationship like that but then for me i was the one who, who was more interested in the relationship the call on the general public to respect salino musicians and to divert from the thought that musicians are drop out he said the musicians in other hands should refrain from all forms of violence and negative songs he asked the government to give full support to the entertainment industry as other countries are very supportive towards their artists Patrick Seyunju, whose popular name is called Fresh Kid, is a Ugandan seven-year-old rapper who has been asked by the Ugandan Youth Minister Florence Nikawala to stop doing music or get arrested. The Youth Minister has made it clear that the seven-year-old should quit rapping, go to school full-time, or face the consequence of being taken to juvenile prison. After allegation that Fresh Kid was not attending school and could perform late at night while his age group are studying, a move the Youth Minister considered as child labor. The constitution clearly states that no one under the age of 18 is allowed to work there for fresh kid should not be working, rather be in school. Anyone found aiding his musical career will have to face the full law, said the minister. As is Kamuga, fresh kid's manager, however, refuted the claims, stating that the seven-year-old was indeed attending school. Speaking to Entertainment Press, Francis says fresh kids only perform over the weekend and does not get paid. For it, therefore, it shouldn't be considered as work. His manager said cover fresh kid in a rural village miming some songs brought him to the city and started paying his school fees there are mixed feelings taken by the uganda youth minister as some ugandans are saying that they just want to deprive the ability and talent of fresh kid <laughs> Well, from the entertainment desk, we go over to sports, and that's the Mari Samoa is all set. Hello and welcome to Sports Update on News R. In this edition, the finals of the Welcome Back Tennis Junior Competition organized by the Salian Tennis Association will be staged on Saturday, 30th March at the Hill Station Tennis Court in Freetown. The finals of the competition, the finalists of the competition are bracing up for the finals and here is a report of one of their training sessions. And in March this year, six under 12 boys and girls were in Benin to represent Sierra Leone in the 2019 under-12 Central and West African International Tennis Federation competition. Being their first competition, based on their performance, the boys and girls were ranked fifth and sixth respectively in the Central and West African ITF ranking. According to the president of the association, Kelvin Ezekiel Kelly, the tournament is to give the kids a befitting welcome for raising the flag of the country high. Remember, we did send a team to Cotonou Benin to represent Sierra Leone, and uh, they really did us proud. They did very well, um, beating countries like Ivory Coast, I mean, countries like uh, Cote d'Ivoire. So they did very well in the tournament. The tournament really is to welcome them back, back home. Welcome them back home and uh, tell them that they are real ambassadors of Sierra Leone. One of the coaches, Sewa Sise, said they have trained the kids effectively, noting that the players will deliver well in the finals. Some of the players have expressed optimism on winning the final. I have been playing very well for the final. And they're sure of winning? Yes, the final because I knew that I would win and I would win well. I have been preparing very well for most of the tournament. Construction of a tennis family lounge is ongoing at the court, which, according to the president, will create a bond among members of the tennis association. And today, in the ongoing selling Premier League, Camboy Eagles of Kenya defeated Boingers by a goal to nil. And on Sunday, FC Cologne will be up against Eastern Lions. That's all for sports in this edition of News R with me, Esther Marie Samora. And with
August 4th, news hour comes to a close, but before we go, a quick look at the top stories. The newly appointed Solicitor General has subscribed to the oath of office. Sierra Leone High Commission in Ghana has hosted an investment forum. And the Sierra Leone Sierra Mineral Holdings One Vimetco has paid surface runs to three chip dumps in the Moyamba district. Well, that's the end of the news from the SLBC. I'm Alice Marie Matanzan. Have a wonderful evening.